We've been making some pretty good progress on our roof. This is the ferro cement dome that goes up to our concrete flange. Then we built the pony wall, wood framed roof on top of the pony wall. So I'm gonna walk you through the construction of, of uh, the last rafter over here. This to show you how we were doing it. Before we even cut the hole in the top of the dome, we uh, figured out you know, a center line and reference marks. We translated those best we could to this flange using a water level, trying to make it as level as possible. But we wound up getting off a little bit. You know, there's one side was uh, like an inch and a half taller than the other or something. We kind of thought that we'd be able to build a, uh, you know, a, a symmetrical circle. But when, when we started doing the layout for the pony wall, we had some of the walls, if we were going to build, you know, uh, somewhere all the angles were the same, some of the walls would stick out too far past the flange one direction, other walls would be too far inside. So we had to decide <laughs> you know, what to do. So we split the difference and, and we, we built the walls with the, the walls centered on our pre-existing flange that we had built. Since it is curved, you can't really tell uh, that it's not symmetrical. It, it, it caused us to have you know unique angles for our rafters. So so each each rafter is fairly unique, and we're using sort of an analog uh, <laughs> technique of, of figuring out the angles. So we we built this little short piece with our, our bird mouth and the height above the the deck that we're looking for, and then we run a string from the top of this to the top of uh, up there, and we can get we can get the uh, the length to plumb, but we're also taking a measurement to the corner of the bird's mouth, just not make sure we get it right. And then with the string on top, nice and tight, we'll we'll figure out the angles of of the the top cut and the, the bottom cut. Just to what I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm not a good explainer. You know, mark our angles, write our lengths, got both sides, and then I build them off of off of these little scribblings here. Because the angle was so steep, we decided not to butt the rafters up, you know, directly in the corner. We built little uh, blocks and, and we're buttoning them up flat against those blocks. See the block there. So the first thing I do is I transfer my uh, line back to my tool. And then I put that angle on my saw. One thirty-five and a half from the the long point. Double check. One three five and a half. Just making sure I get somewhat close to that. Look. So before I confuse myself. I'm just going to put some reference marks on here. I like these as the top and <laughs> something like that just so I know what I end up working on. Now to cut out the bird mouth. Alright, long point to bird mouth was 24 and 5 sixteenths. That's the long point. One twenty-four and five sixteenths. Do my best to draw a little arch of possibility there, and then we know that we want our height of above plate to be four and a quarter. You know, I showed you the, the the little jig up on the roof that had you know the, the bird mouth in it, and we're measuring the uh, the the length to the top. Right? This came out 122 and 7 eighths. See that? The difference is just 1 16th of an inch from, you know, figuring out your bird's mouth from the, the top of the board versus the measurement from top to bird's mouth. They're very close. So take my mark there, corner there. So 
So I squared the end down there up. I'm just gonna transfer my marks across side to side. It's working out pretty good. So if you look at that, you know, they line up there, line up there. It'll be a nice little bird's mouth. So we've been matching our bird's mouth to the angle of the wall just a little bit. You know, if you see that or not. So what I did was I marked my angle. Just so we can get close, just to just to estimate. So it can get a little confusing when you start, you know, rotating these around and whatnot. But this is the inside and this is the inside. So there you go. So this is the outside of this side, I think. <laughs> Let me think about this. I'm just gonna sort of eyeball it because it really doesn't have to be that crazy. And then on this side, like so. Something like that. And we're gonna try to continue that line down a ways and I'm going to rediscover my height above the plate, right there, right there. Continue that line. I'm going to continue this line. I'm going to be cutting through it with a skill saw, so it's going to find it's going to find where it wants to be anyways. I'm just going to mark it just for whatever. to each other. I can sand that down once I get them laminated together. So one feels, you know, this one feels a little bit taller, but all in all that's good. At this, so I've already glued uh, this other one together. And see that line? Ooh, it's tight. I mean, I got that by planing the, the inside of the boards, you know, using the, the planer like a joiner, so I could get that. So I'm gonna do it again for this one. And for that, we need to go up to the barn. So this is my, uh, my this is my dad's Foley Bell Saw planer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to back it off about a quarter inch, just so the board fits in there. And then I'm going to find the board as it's going through. So the the board is cupped like this. So I'm going to run it through on the the bottom edges first and take out the. The, the cup in it. Find the board. Yeah, I just gotta run it through one more time, I guess. So I get the part that I missed, and then we'll get serious and get a good plane on the next one. So now I'm gonna run the second board through, and this one's cup is on the outside of the board. So hopefully, you know, be able to take off any of the, the markings or anything. serious with it now. Uh, a full turn of this handle is a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm just going to give it a <laughs> half a turn. That's not very serious. But. All right, so the inside of this board is getting very close, but I still haven't taken out the defects here at the end. So I'm going to run it through this side again but the outside of this board it cleaned up everything that I thought was gross so I'm gonna claim the inside part of this beam next all right so one more half turn 
I, you know, I don't have to sneak up on it, but I want to keep the boards as thick as possible, especially since I already made my cuts. Yeah, the act of filming this got me a little bit confused on the process, the, the order of things I was doing. Uh, so I meant to plane the boards first and then do the cuts, but what a... Well, it's not perfect. You can see a few little lines where I guess I have nicks in my uh, blades on the planer. But, oh my God, it's just an amazing feeling to have a flat surface and just like you put a bead of glue and it just farts out all sides. So this is going to be really nice and, and oh, just make, make one solid piece of wood out of out of these two rafters. I assume, you know, this is probably completely unnecessary, all this, but I like it. So these are the insides. I'm geeking out about the insides. The outsides are fine, too. <laughs> I'm going to hit them with a 120 uh, sandpaper on a palm sander just because I've had a little bit of problems with uh, putting the oil on and having the grain raise on me. But, you know. Alright, so before I get crazy with the glue, I'm gonna go ahead and just mark my screw holes. So, towards the uh, the end, I like to put a couple screws. We've been doing every eight inches. First step is I'm just gonna wash them wet my mating surfaces. All right, the goal is to squish all that glue out. We started putting the deck on our roof and we're uh, going up the center of the scissor truss first. <laughs> 